Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is uh, Ben and I are going to talk a little bit about the instrument panel, uh, the brake system, and uh, the steering system. So uh, let's, let's just move back and, um, and have a look at a few things that we think are kind of interesting. <clears throat> One of them, for me, is really interesting is, um, is the, uh, the fact that they're using a, a very large uh, magnesium die casting. I've been an advocate of uh, magnesium for this kind of an application for a long time because magnesium sucks up um, a vibration better than any metal, any material that I know of, and it's also great in crash worthiness. So I'm really excited that uh, Ford has, uh, has put this in here. And before I go any further, I gotta make a correction. Mark and I had read everything we could get on whose battery was there, and, um, and we were under the impression, based on the, the news media, that, um, that the, uh, the battery packs were made by SK. They are not. They're made by LG. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the people at Ford for correcting that for us. We like to be as accurate as we can be, and I thought we'll just make that happen right now. So anyway, this is a, this is a really good idea. I like, I like magnesium as a uh, crash worthiness uh, component and also to get rid of NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Anyway, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on the other side there, Ben? All right, we can do that. Um, taking a look at the casting that Sandy was talking about, one of the advantages of the die casting is being able to mold in some features for the brackets that you have to put on still. That way they're located in the proper position and only need one fastener to be able to hold them in place. Uh, so you can see one here for this upper bracket. There's a bracket on the other side that is holding in a control module that is doing the same thing. So it makes the assembly of all the pieces that need to be mounted to it much easier. Um, and looking at some of the other, uh, other functions of the IP, uh, this has a lot of mounting features built into it. You can see these very large pins here that will help locate the IP when it gets decked. And as we move to the center, there is a bracket that goes around the accelerator pedal that will help to locate it. And then down at the very bottom here, there's an HVAC drain that you'll see. Um, there's a corresponding piece in the body in white that will show you that helps to center the, the IP and put it in the right position. Also with this HVAC drain, there's a bunch of ribs that are cast into here. That tells us that this is a structural component um, and there's, it's going to be doing a little bit more than just its HVAC duties. And then as we go back to putting this into the vehicle, uh, it gets mounted in using all of those mounting features. There are two bolts that will go through the magnesium casting and fasten it to the body in white. Uh, the access to the top fastener is pretty easy. We were able to get in there, but to access this bottom fastener, this front panel of the IP had to be pulled off. We had to remove some screws and pull it back to be able to access it. So we're thinking that this may be installed uh, as a secondary process after the IP is installed into the vehicle, which is something that's a little bit different. Normally there's just an end cap that'll go over the side here to cover up uh, the access to all the fasteners, but this one has a little bit more to it. I think though that <clears throat> one of the main reasons that they may have that access panel uh, so big is because they uh, they need to get the um, <clears throat> they, they need to get the steering column componentry uh, attached, and usually that takes somebody on the inside and somebody on the outside. So I think that by doing that, I've got a big area so I can stick my hand in, and it's a good place to have a break anyway for the uh, for the IP. So I think it's also an assembly aid. Okay. Yeah. All right, and talking about the steering column, this vehicle uses a column mounted power steering, power steering motor. Uh, so this is the motor that, that assists you when you go to turn the vehicle. For a 4,500 pound vehicle, uh, it's very unusual to see it located on the column. Normally it would be down on the rack. It's more efficient when it's down on the rack, but it's more expensive to put the motor down on the rack. So this is a large motor that is located up on the column, so it's a little bit cheaper execution, but uh, you don't get quite the performance out of this as you would from something on the column. 
But, but the other thing is, um, if I would have taken that and put it on the rack, what would I have done to the frunk? Again, we look at what's, more, what's the most important thing for, uh, for the customer, and that's usable space. I mean, uh, everybody that's in the auto industry knows that usable space is, is really, really important. All right, so the steering wheel on this vehicle does telescope in and out as well as up and down. Yeah, I like, um, I like this feature because uh, I've got short legs and long arms, so um, that to me is a, is a real good feature. Getting in and out of the car, um, I would cheerfully uh, like to have, uh, have uh, uh, my Jeep uh, push inside a bit so that I can squeeze in. Um, so I like, that, uh, I like that feature. What about the one you then, don't like? Yeah, and then there <laughs> is access to the HVAC vents on off wheels. So you have two center HVAC vents that are right here. There are wheels that are hidden behind the, uh, the center screen to be able to open up and close these, which are very hard to get at. Um, you can see it on both sides. They're kind of buried back in there. So you've got to reach in there. And I've got larger hands, so this affects me more than it would affect most people. But just getting in there is hard to do. Um, and when my wife and I drive the same cars, she tends to get cold a lot. She'll close all the vents on her side. So I, we're always opening and closing vents as we go. That would just that would get annoying to me if I was driving this car. So I guess uh, what we can do is uh, move on to one of the things that a lot of people talk about, and that is um, the air filtration system. So there is an, a filter. There is a filter in this car, and um, it's relatively easy to get to. You drop the uh, the glove box, and then you can see that there's a little uh, a little trap door right here. You can pull that down. And then, if I can get lucky, if I could just grow fingernails, then uh, you, can, you can pull out the air filter and uh, put a new one in. Uh, and this is relatively simple. Some of them, some of the uh, uh, products that we've looked at are, you might as well forget it. That is, you almost have to take the instrument panel off to put these things in. And because I can't see what I'm doing, I'm just gonna leave it there. Let's go on to what we think is next important. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about old-fashioned brakes and newfangled brakes. So, what we're looking at here is what OEMs have traditionally done for their braking system. You have a uh, brake booster and master cylinder assembly. This is a steel single diaphragm brake booster. So your brake pedal would connect on the back side here. And as you push in the brakes, this would push in uh, and it would pull, push into the master cylinder. Uh, there is also a vacuum that is being pulled from the engine here, uh, so that you're, that's where you're getting your boost from, your assist from. Uh, in a PHEV or a BEV vehicle that doesn't have an engine running, if you were to use this type of a system, you would need a separate vacuum pump with all the associated power lines and hoses for that. So what this will do is you've got a your master cylinder, then you've got your master cylinder bottle, has your, your fluids in it. This runs a couple of lines over to your electronic stability control module, your ESC, which has four lines running out to the brake calipers at the four wheels. And this is what controls your anti-lock brakes as well as your uh, electronic stability control, as I said. So there's, there's some brains inside of this uh, that's going to be opening and closing valves as needed for the vehicle to properly uh, start and stop. And another variation of this booster, this is an aluminum housing one, and they have dual diaphragms in this. Uh, they do that to add a little bit more performance to it. So you'll get this uh, in a larger vehicle or something that's looking to get more braking performance. So that's a mechanical system. It means basically whatever you push on with your foot is going straight into that box. And, um, and everything you can push is, um, is, going to be, is going to be what's going to um, break the car. And quite frankly, um, that's kind of old fashioned. So let's have a look at what we've got now. Now the reason that we did not go to this kind of a thing in the past is because this is more expensive than that. Um, but this is the braking system in an electric vehicle. 
So this is doing everything that you just saw Ben talk about. And uh, the only difference here would be that this has got this uh, little bottle with a cool snap fit. Okay, so you take this and you snap it on. And now this is the brake fill bottle. And it's going into the module that we're going to be using for modulating the brakes. And I think this is slick. I love this snap fit. I absolutely think this is wonderful. And in the past, <clears throat> this would never happen. Um, there was a lot of rules and regulations about how we had to put things together in the olden days. And um, a snap fit would have never, never passed muster. So let's go inside and, um, and have a look at what we found inside the car that I think is worth talking about a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is talk about maybe um, something that uh, whose time has come. And um, so before I start talking about the Mustang, let's talk about these two little doodads right here. This um, in my right hand is a plastic accelerator pedal. And this one is a rugged manly iron uh, and plastic and got a spring and, and a bushing. This is, uh, this is a rugged manly kind of accelerator pedal. And um, <clears throat> when one, my team, when we had this thing called design for automation team, when we said, hey, let's make this out of plastic, the answer was, <clears throat> Uh, there's only two kinds of plastics, the kind that break today and the kind that break tomorrow. Um, and, um, and, uh, and so it, it ran into a lot of obstacles. It took us two years, and, um, and the guy in charge of the accelerator department had to, had to die. Um, and unfortunately, it, that's the way it worked. And so we got to move from this to this. Now what I'd like to do is show you what's going on inside here. This is a brake pedal. So the brake pedal is attached now to what? Uh, like a switch, all right? Something like your dimmer switch in your house. So you can press on this as hard as you want. It's an electric device. It doesn't care about hydraulic pressure or where the di diaphragm is or, uh, or anything else that's going on under the hood because this, is just like I say a dimmer switch that's how your brakes are working now you push in and the brakes turn on they're electric so the question is why have I still got this manly heavy-duty giant chunk of iron sitting right here now for everybody that's watched the um, the uh, video that we did on the battery uh, battery tray with um, with our friends over at Sabic, if, if all the guys at Sabic, um, we know now that we can make this, definitely make this out of, uh, out of something that would be as equally as strong because like I say, it's a dimmer switch. It's not mechanical. We can make that out of, uh, we can make that out of the uh, Sabic uh, style plastic. It doesn't burn. It's just as strong. And, and it's like I said, it's just a dimmer switch. So, this one here is kind of a mystery, but Ben's got one that's much more mysterious than mine. So, Ben, why don't you uh, tell them about the box, or uh, not the box, but the empty space you found. Right, we, uh, as, when we removed the IP, we found this plastic bracket here that had nothing mounted to it. So there's a lot of space underneath the IP. Uh, the lower HVAC mounts to this stud here, so there's nothing, this isn't a space claim for the IP, um, the, it's awfully high up for a footwell. There is some carpet that covers this up, but there is a lot of space in and behind this that is still available. Uh, what we're thinking is this may be a space claim for future uh, ADAS systems as they get into a little bit more autonomous driving, that they may be able to put some stuff in there and it needs to be here. So they put a piece in here so nobody else infringes on their space. And here in the center, this is the, uh, the mount for the HVAC drain that we talked about. So this is what is going to help position the entire IP, uh, both horizontally, left to right, and front to back in the vehicle. Well, wow. right. that seems like a good idea. And guess what? I just found something else. Um, this 
this is kind of a, I, I wasn't looking at, I didn't look at this before, but this is your windshield wiper module. And we designed one almost identical to this for um, ATT Automotive quite a while ago. And um, it was kind of rejected by, I can't remember which OEM, but here it is sitting in front of me. So we've got, we've got an aluminum casting right here, or maybe magnesium, but I can't see. But anyways, uh, something that's non-metallic, or sorry, non-ferrous. And uh, these bars look pretty much the same. In fact, it looks so identical, I can't hardly believe it. So um, another little surprise. Every time we turn around, we get some happy little surprise tearing apart the, the Mach-E. Anyhow, um, anything else then, Ben? That is everything for today. Oh, good. As long as I don't put my hand on something else uh, that we need to talk about, I guess we'll call it a day. So thanks very much for watching Monroe Live. And uh, we'll uh, stay tuned and we'll, we'll be talking to you again about the other interesting things that we find as we tear this thing to pieces. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye now. Thanks.